Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to 999. We're back here again in the operating room, and I believe we've gotten all the body parts. Now, knowing the game, it probably won't be as easy as place body parts on table. And what leads me to believe that is that little picture we found that listed different weights for Lucy and John. So I'm curious if this is going to work once, like just in the first try or not. Let's try it. An old hard bed. Wait. Do I not just like stick body parts on? Oh, I've got a clicker head. Okay, so we've collected all six parts of the medical mannequin. So the ones we must the ones we've got must be for Lucy, right? Yeah. Seems like it. Well, I say we give Lucy her parts back. Any objections? Nope. Agreed. Alright, let's get started. Combine! <laughs> what? Okay. So... Hey. Nothing happened. That's odd. Maybe it's the wrong weight? Wait? Yeah, well, you know how there's a scale on the side of the bed. Maybe... We need to get the scale to a specific number. How are we gonna do that? I think we're supposed to swap your body parts with John's. Oh. Let's give it a shot. Okay, operating instructions. Okay. Do we know what their individual weights are? No, we have no idea what their weights are. Great. And I think they're saying their heads and their arms can't move, but everything else can. Now, I'm going to back out of this. See if it gives oh. me any dialogue for that. No dice. I think if we knew the weight of each part, we could figure it out, and that's what I'm going to go look up really quick. So if you remember, in the other room, there was a diagram that listed the weights. Oh wait, no, no, we got it in our dang file screen. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of this and then have it right next to me so I can see what it is. Um, but So give me a second just to get that all together, and then we'll be right back at the medical mannequin. And while we're here, why don't we just uh, give it a quick search. Let's see. Okay, so that's kind of what we knew. Now, I've got this uh, right next to me. The cool thing about this uh, about this recording software I have is that it has a screenshot button. So I was able to take a screenshot with it and then pull it up so it's right next to, uh, it's right next to the game on screen. And so let's see if it'll let us, uh, let's see if it'll let us... Maybe we have to go to the girl to do it. All right, so, um, and I'll, I'll give you guys the image as well, just so you know, um, which you're probably already looking at because I've already done it, so I should shut up. The one on the left needs to be 51.3 kilograms, and the one on the right needs to be 53.2 kilograms. Now, I don't know if there's any real way to distinguish the different parts at all. So we might just have to start flipping things around just to see what happens. Or actually, well... How about this? Um, that's really complicated, isn't it? You could do it if you swapped each part individually and see which weight increased and which weight decreased. That could be a way, like, let's see, if I click this. So the arm that the girl currently has... Which is why it's hard. If they were, like, colored blue and red, maybe. The arm that the girl currently has is the 1.5 weight arm. Well, we could at least, in general, we could just try to make John's weight lower and keep swapping things out until it works. Okay, that's close. Oh, we're so close. We're point three away. What's point three? The heart is point three. Um, uh, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do it. It's probably a combination of these. Well, they are kind of color-coded, actually. One of them's darker than the other. It's kind of hard to tell. Oh, we need to lower it by point two. Can we switch the chest? No, that, that was actually what I didn't want. 0.5. Oh, we're so close. 
But there's nothing that's point one, is there? No, I didn't think so. No, that's not what I wanted. I wanted... No, that wasn't it either. Dang it. Okay, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna mess around with it for a bit till I get it, and if I can't get it, then I'll look it up, but, uh, just give me a minute. I, I kinda wanna try this. Oh, oh, I did it by accident. So it looks like all I really did was switch to all the parts but the heart out, I think. Maybe. I'm not sure because I can't tell if the heart, I can't tell which heart is which because they're the exact same, but the body parts, it looks like I swapped everything but the head and the arm out for the guys. Hey, Junpei, I just heard something. It came from John's operating table. We better check it out. Indeed, we better. Uh, no, not that. Hey, Junpei, look at the scale! Uh, okay. Huh? The lid on the scale! It's open. Ah, and there's a key in here. It opened! Oh, I get it. It must have opened because we matched John's weight to what's on the chart. And, indeed, that's what it was. So we've got the Jupiter key, which is interesting, um, because... I'm trying to link all the different bad endings we got to each other and how they got through things. I believe this is the key that lets us go back to the main staircase. And I think this is the key that maybe that, um, I think this is the key that they found in the laboratory last time they were in here. And what's that? Oh, I guess I can't look at it. Okay, so we've got the Jupiter key. I'm gonna take a guess. Say it goes to the door over here. Maybe. Hey, hold on. Junpei stopped, about to put the key into the doorknob. What's up? Where's Clover? Uh-oh, did she find an axe or did she get a scalpel or something? Junpei turned around. Clover was nowhere to be seen. Uh, where did she go? Uh, okay, hold on a minute. I'll go get her. Sure thing. Junpei left Seven at the door and headed back to the operating room. He found her, standing next to the operating table. She was staring at the mannequin. Hey, Clover, what's wrong? Come on, let's get out of here. She didn't respond. If she hadn't been standing up and breathing, Junpei might have thought she was dead. What are you doing? Did you, did you want to come back here and say goodbye to John? It wasn't the best joke, but it was something. An attempt to lighten the mood. Clover didn't laugh. She stood stock still and said nothing. Hey, Clover, can you hear me? Perhaps it was something you'd said, or perhaps it was something else. Now, I don't know if this means anything, mind you, but, and I, and, and I don't know the final weights of everything because I don't remember which heart belonged to which person originally, but I do find it a little bit odd that Except for her arm and her head, we switched all of Lucy's body parts with the man's. Does that mean something, I wonder? Are they saying, like, maybe some sort of weird experiment had gone on? I don't know. Suddenly, her mouth opened, and she whispered in a dry, dead voice. My brother might be dead. Huh? That's why we couldn't find him. I, th I think he might be dead. Or maybe he's not. If he's dead, I'm going to be next. Suddenly, the operating room felt very, very cold. W what are you talking about? What's wrong with you? He gave her a small shake, but she didn't respond. The silence grew heavier. Junpei, what do you want to do? Now, I believe getting the four-leaf clover earlier was the thing that's allowing us to have a decision here. And normally you just have to tell the Clover they needed to leave, and I believe that just takes you off of the route. I'm going to double check really quick online because I don't have the webpage open to make sure that we need to give her the four-leaf Clover, but I'm almost positive we do, so I will be right back. Okay, so that's correct. We do need to give her the four-leaf Clover. Oh, yeah. 
He didn't know why, but suddenly Junpei remembered something he'd been given earlier. So maybe I was hypothesizing that the four-leaf clover maybe was useful for something later, but I couldn't figure what. And apparently it is. A four-leaf clover. Santa had given it to him in the second class room. He held it out to Clover. Because she looks like she needs some uh, luck or encouragement. Did you know that each leaf on the four-leaf clover means something? Hope, faith, love, and luck. Take it. Use it as a good luck charm. He pressed the four-leaf clover into her hand. Listen to me, Clover. No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember that's what's most important. And that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember those, then that'll bring you good luck. Snake, I mean, your brother, he's not dead. He's alive somewhere, I'm sure of it. You've just got to believe in that. I sure hope we don't go to the number three door after this, because otherwise she's going to hate you and pay forever. Even if we manage to get down to the chapel anyway. Clover stared at the four-leaf clover in her hand. He could see tears starting to form at the corners of her eyes. Thank you. Her voice was tiny and broken, and as she spoke, she started to cry. She tried to hide her tears by looking at the floor, but it did little good. She wiped away tears with the baggy arms of her jacket, but more quickly took their place. No matter how she tried, she couldn't stop crying. Her tears made small wet circles on the floor. Thank you. She said it again. Then she looked up at Junpei and seemed to choke down the last of her grief. She did her best to smile. Junpei wiped an errant tear from her cheek with his thumb and gave her the best smile he could manage. Now come on. Seven's waiting for us at the exit. But still, she didn't move. W wait. Before we go, there's one thing I want to ask you. What's that? What do you think when you hear the word experiment? For a moment, his mind froze. Then he came back to his senses and realized the word meant nothing to him, aside from the dictionary definition. Uh, what? Oh, huh. I guess it was just a coincidence then. I mean, that you knew about the four-leaf clover. Uh, look, I'm sorry, I don't want to be a jerk, but... You're making less than no sense right now. Oh, no, 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 no. It's nothing. Just forget about it. Oh, don't give me that. You really think I could just drop this? What is this experiment you were talking about? Now, I feel like this is probably kind of important. Clover looked away. The four-leaf clover was still in her hand. She stared at it for a long moment and then finally spoke. You... You promise you won't tell anyone? Cross my heart. Really? Really? I can trust you, right? Now, okay, so maybe this is an important point, is that now, because we're having this conversation with her, she'll put her trust in Junpei and not try to, you know, ax him in the back or anything. Of, of course you can. Clover slipped the four-leaf clover into her pocket. Her eyes still red from crying, she looked up at Junpei. Okay, then, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened on this ship nine years ago. Oh, wait, 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 wait. On this ship? Yeah, this ship. He was entirely lost. He had a thousand questions, but it was probably best, he thought, to save them until Clover had finished. It was an experiment to test some sort of psychic thing. Something about... Communicating through these fields that you can't see, it always goes back to morphogenic field. Fields that you can't see? He heard something like this before, more than once. Clover nodded. Like, think about this. She pointed at the operating table. On top of it was a somewhat mismatched medical mannequin, whose parts had been swapped with another mannequin. This is John, right? But... Is he really John? All Junpei could think of was, she has finally completely lost it. Isn't this like... Lock Socks? Or the ship of the... Thesis? 
Junpei grew even more confused. He'd never heard of either of those things, although they sounded smart. You don't know? You haven't heard of those paradoxes? Now, I'm, I'm guessing what she's talking about is like, is it really John? Is because a lot of his body's missing and it's being replaced with Lucy's body. So I'm curious, you know, it's kind of curious. It's like, is he actually John anymore? Because he's gotten this much of him replaced. You don't know? You haven't heard of those paradoxes? Clover laughed. Okay, well, pay attention then. This is how lock socks work. Okay, let's say I've got a pair of socks. They're my favorite socks. One of them gets a hole in it. What would you do if that was your sock, Junpei? Um, now I think this is actually kind of important. Let me check to make sure, but I think this is actually really important. Okay, so here I was told, um, I'm just following a guide that someone told me in the comments. Uh, Mika, actually. Um, I was told here that I need to, say, patch it up. And I guess, you know... You know, I guess if it was my favorite pair of socks, I would patch it up, though honestly I probably wouldn't. I'd just throw them away because socks are cheap, but maybe if they were like some really cool awesome socks, maybe. Get some cloth and close the hole. But what if another hole opens? I'd add another patch, I suppose. What if another hole opened after that? Um, another patch, I guess? Well, let's say you just keep adding new patches. Until eventually, the original cloth of the sock is totally gone. Okay. Once you get to that point, can you really say they're the same socks you started with? Uh, now that's a thought puzzle right there, right? Because physically, it is not composed of the same material as the original sock. But you could also say that it's like the material that you patched it with became part of the sock and as you added on to it more of it it's it's a thought it's a thought puzzle really it's a thought experiment it doesn't it's not really an answer to it. it it's sort of the same thing as saying um if you've got a car and you just keep replacing parts on it after a while do you still have the same car now it could be argued that yes i still have a car but you don't have the exact same individual car and so it's even questionable to say if you replace one part of something is it still the same something? There's a question for you. Junpei crossed his arms. So, that's the lock socks thing? Yeah. The ship of the, the Thesis, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. It looks like Thesis. These Thesis is a lot like it. The ship of the Thesis, if you keep fixing the damaged parts of a ship, eventually it ends up with none of the parts it started with. Can you really say that ship is the ship of the Theses that you started with? And what if you took all the old parts from the first ship and build another one somewhere else? Then what ship is the real ship of Theses? Now that's, that's, I think that's where the real problem lies in, is the fact that it loses its sense of identity when it gets all these new parts because then you can recreate another one using the first parts and then you can't really say which one is the original one, like which one has has the belonging of the ship, if that makes sense. For example, this one, the ship of the Theses. Which one is the real ship of the Theses? Because you could argue both ways that they're both them, but how could two ships be one ship? The one you repaired, or the one you built with all the original parts? Hmm. It was an interesting question. Clover could see Junpei was intrigued. Hey... Do you think it's the same? What's the same? These guys. Is this John? Or is it Lucy now? Now that's that's the question is what that's another question about people is that does, you know, cuz obviously their faces stayed and their uh, left arm stayed. Does that mean that <laughs> that you are still the same person if your left arm is there or if your face is there? A lot of people would say face because that is where your brain is, and it kind of, it's what people recognize of a person. But then again, you could say your heart is, or, you know, your, the vast majority of your internal organs. It's another hard question. A mannequin full of body parts from a different body. Clover had been right. It was just like lock socks in the ship of the thesis. 
The part of the body that holds a person's identity is the head. Of course, for many hundreds of years, conventional wisdom had held that a man's identity had resided in its heart, or any number of internal organs. John's head and heart were both his. But apart from that, in a single arm, the rest of the body had once been Lucy's. Was that mannequin really John? We're just like these mannequins. She looked at Junpei again. Think about it. The cells in her body change every day. Old ones die and new ones are born. Maybe part of my arm is made up of stuff I ate from a fish I ate once. Or maybe part of your right side is made from a cow you ate. If you take a little it a little further, those cows and fishes are made from something else too, right? That's how we're all connected. Through fields that can't be seen with the naked eye. Okay, so this is this is actually interesting because now they're saying morphogenic field in a different way other than just a field you can't see, which up till now has been explained as telepathy as an easy way to understand it. But but this is implying that almost like you're gaining information through the things you're made up of. The silence was broken by seven. Hey! What are you- what is taking you so long? Seven's head appeared in the doorway. He was not happy. Well, we kind of did just screw around here for a while. How long are you going to make me wait? We don't have time to screw around. Junpei and Clover looked at each other. Clover looked at Junpei as if to say there was more she wanted to tell him. She shook her head. Whatever she had to tell him, she didn't want to tell him in front of Seven. Seven seemed to catch on. Oh, what were you two doing? Was this some sort of secret meeting? No, it wasn't. We were just... Just... Playing. With the mannequins. Huh? Let's go, Junpei. Moving a little bit too fast to be entirely innocent, Clover headed towards the exit. Seven stared after her, then turned to Junpei with an amused expression. Playing with the mannequins, huh? Didn't know you were into that kind of thing, Junpei. You're a jerk. Junpei dashed past him and traced Clover's path out the door. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> with a short laugh, Seven followed. They stood, looking at the door. Junpei took out the Jupiter key. All right, I'm going to open it now. Is that cool? You don't need to keep asking. Just do it, all right? Heh, <laughs> fine then. He slid the key into the keyhole and turned it. He felt it unlock. Aha, there we go. We got our way out. The door opened with a soft, melancholy creak. Beyond it lay a simple white hallway. There was no fanfare or confetti. Obviously, there was no one there to applaud them. They simply walked through the door. That was it. Now I wonder... Why are they spending so long talking about their exit? They don't normally do that. Alright, let's get going. Hey man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know? Why so serious? Can't you sound more happy? You know, get a little excited? Not really. Junpei turned away from Seven and took his first step down the simple white hallway. My brother might be dead. I'm going to be next. Clover had told him only a few minutes before that that her brother was probably dead and she was likely to follow him. Well, in terms of all the other endings, that was true. Although, Snake wasn't exactly dead. Except for, well... No, that, that was even backwards. She died and then Snake died. Whatever. How could he pretend to be happy after hearing something like that? Well, regardless, we found it. Congratulations. They left the operating room. The hallway took them around several corners and past several doors, but they were all locked. Until at last... The final door was hidden in a corner of the hall. This door looks familiar, doesn't it? Junpei grabbed the handle. 
As he made to push it open, a voice stopped him. Now, okay, th I can't skip this, but it belonged to neither Seven nor Clover. Jumpy! He spun around. He saw someone running towards him from the other end of the hallway. Still won't let me skip this, but it is, we already know what this is like. They pulled up short in front of Junpei, breathing hard. <laughs> what are you doing here? So we're all familiar with this. Um, can you come take a look at this? Is this the map? Is it? There's something on the wall. See, yeah, it's the map. Okay, I'm going to skip to when something actually different happens. It won't let me skip at the moment. But I'll skip to when uh, something different in the dialogue changes. Okay, so at this point, as you can see, it's letting you skip dialogue. And we're at about... Oh, there's a little bit... Yeah, because we, 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 got, we got the Jupiter key. Okay, so... It, it's basically the same thing. We just found the keys in reverse order, kind of. Or at least the opposite teams found the keys. And uh, I'm going to stop here. And next time we come back... It'll either be if there's new dialogue, or if, uh, or whenever we get to the point where we need to break off to door six, which is our next door we have to go through. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm still trying to see if it'll let me skip. Uh, thanks for watching, and I, I am a kind of out of time at the moment. So, I'm just going to stop it here, but I'll get to the next place we need to go next time, and then uh, we will continue from there. So, uh, and sorry, door, uh, sorry this place took so long. There was so much dialogue in uh, room seven. Anyway, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!